Hey, and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. Uh, I got an email last week from Alana, and she had come across this image online, and she was wondering how to make this faux drop shadow hatched text effect. Uh, so that's what we're doing today. And we'll just jump right into it. I'm using two colors for this. This is the dark gray color, and you can see the color build over here. It's just 90% black, zero for everything else. And then this gold color is 0, 35 for magenta, 98 for yellow, and 15 for black. And this font, I believe, is Futura, but that doesn't come standard on everyone's computers, so we'll use a different free font, which I use pretty frequently. So if you've done these tutorials before, you probably already have this font, but I'll leave a, a link in the video description on where you can pick it up for free. And that font is right here, Nova Cento, Sans Wide. Demi bold is the weight, and we're going to have 150 for tracking. And I'm just let me type it out and I'll see what size we're going to make it. Oh, so for this font, when you uh, type in lowercase, it defaults to small caps, and when you type in um, caps, it's a full cap. So small caps are way sexier, so that's why I'm typing all lowercase. And I'm just going to scale it up. So the size of this is, let's just make it 110. All right, and we're gonna color it this gray color. So I'm just gonna hit I on my keyboard, eyedropper that, and then hit V to return back to my pointer tool. So now we have our text. Uh, and next we are gonna create this hatched drop shadow. So I'm gonna hold Alt on my keyboard, and this will make a copy. So as I click and I drag, this is making a copy, but you can see I can move it wherever I want. And I wanna keep it straight in line with my original type. So as I'm dragging, I'm gonna hit Shift, and that'll keep it straight. And I'm gonna move it quite a ways away from my beginning text so I don't interfere with it. Okay, so next thing we need to do is create a shape out of this so it's not editable text anymore. Uh, and I should mention what we're doing, we're not creating uh, like a text layer style, this is gonna be more of an artistic style. So if if you're looking at a magazine and you've got a title page with, with beautiful text, um, where it's kind of a one-off, where you're not gonna repeat the same thing for other text, it's just one beautiful piece of art, that's what we're doing right here. So because of that, that's why this is going to be uneditable. Uh, so let's go type, create outlines, and now these are shapes and we can't edit that type. Okay. So now we're gonna create these hatched lines and we're gonna do that by grabbing our line tool. But we need to make sure that the stroke is set to the gold color and it doesn't have a fill. So if I come over here to my color palette, if you don't see this, you can get to it by going window color and you'll get this palette over here. And I don't wanna fill, so if your fill is in front like mine is, just hit this and it'll get rid of it, this none. And then we need to click on the stroke because this is where we're gonna color it. So I'm going to grab my eyedropper again by hitting I on my keyboard and I'm going to hold shift when I click this color. Otherwise, it'll default to the settings of this, which is a fill of color and we want it for a stroke. So if you hold shift, it'll apply the color to whatever's in front over here and right here I've got my stroke. So hold shift, click and now I've got my gold. And now I'm going to grab my line tool and I'm going to hold shift on my keyboard and when you hold shift it defaults to a 45 degree angle so I'm just gonna I'm gonna be pretty generous with the the height of it and then I, I'm hitting V on my keyboard so now it's just selected and then I'm gonna hold alt again because I'm gonna make a copy and I'm gonna drag this copy and as I'm dragging I'm gonna hold shift again I'm gonna drag all the way until I'm past uh, the final S so when I create my hatched lines, um, it'll span across all the letters. Okay, so next we're going to use the blend tool to create all the lines in between these two lines. And your blend tool is right here. Uh, the keyboard shortcut for that is W. So I'm going to double click on this and I'm, gonna, I'm going to put, um, make sure your spacing is set to specified steps. And I've chosen 125 steps. So there will there will be 125 lines between these two lines. That's what that means. And I should mention these lines are just the default one point weight. Um, okay, so now I need to select what I'm blending. So I'm blending this one. So once you see this X show up as you hover over it, click once, go to your next line, hover over till you see the plus sign, click 
click again, and now you can see I've got my hatched lines, and they go right through my text. You can move it around, rearrange it however you want. Okay, so now this is one big unit. You can see if I move it around, everything moves together. And I need it to be separate shapes, like um, I just did for the text. So in order to do that, we need to come up and go Object, Expand. And you want to make sure all of these are checked right here and hit OK. All right, so now I've got separate lines. All these lines are separate, so I can move each one of them if I want, but they're all grouped together. So I want them to be shapes. I don't want them to have weight. So you can see if I hit uh, increase my weight right here, you can, you can tell uh, it's noticeable here. So I'm going to go back to one point. And I want to make these shapes so I can't um, change the weight like this. So I'm going to go Object Expand and just do it one more time and make sure Fill and Stroke are selected and hit OK. And now you can see the weight went away because if I zoom in close and select it, these are shapes now instead of uh, a line with weight on it. All right, so now I need to send this to the back. So I'm just going to right click, arrange, send it back. And now it's sitting behind my stars right here. But um, all of these letters are considered individual shapes, and I need them to be considered one shape. So when I mask these lines within it, it fits in as if this was one shape instead of one shape. That's really confusing. Um, but here, I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. Um, so I want to make a clipping mask. So clipping mask make, you can see nothing happens because all these are separate shapes. The lines don't know where to go. So let me undo that. And if I select my text right here or my shapes that used to be text um, and I go object compound path make, this makes it all one shape now. And if I select everything, I'm just rubber band selecting everything. And then I'm going to right click and choose make clipping mask and now it fits within just that one shape. All right, and now since we dragged it um, exactly even with the original type, I can select it and start to move it. And as I'm moving it, I can hold Shift and drag it all the way back up. And now it's on top of it, and we need to send it behind it. But first, we're going to off-center it so, you can, so we can replicate the example up here. So I'm just going to nudge it with my arrow keys a few times. All right, so now I need to send it to back, so I'm going to right-click, Arrange, Send to Back. And that's looking pretty close, but you can see we've kind of got um, some space between where the dash um, begins, the, the hatch uh, drop shadow begins. So with our text selected, I'm going to go back up to the color palette, and you can see I don't have a stroke here, but I want it to be a white stroke, so I'm just going to click on this. And now it's a white stroke. And if you want to adjust the weight of that stroke, you can just come over here to your stroke palette. If you don't see this, you can get to it by going window stroke, and it'll bring it up. And you can adjust the stroke here if you want. I think I'm going to go somewhere in between maybe 1.25. And that looks good. And finally, you can see that um, if you get really close, I know this is kind of low res, but you can see where uh, the hatch marks kind of come in, you can kind of see them through the gray. So if you want to do that, I personally um, prefer the way this looks without that, but if you if you like that effect and want it, all you have to do is select your text and then go um, to your transparency setting, and this is your blend mode. And if you change this to multiply, that's where you'll get that overlap. Um, but I like it without it, so I'm going to leave it without it. So that's how you make a faux hatched drop shadow text effect in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. If you uh, can't figure out how to do something or see something you like and want to know how it's done, feel free to leave it in the comments section or send me an email. Uh, you can find my email on every-tuesday.com, and I'll leave a link in the video description for that too. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.